which means I'm now in my final destination. Can you guess where I am? Hi everyone and welcome back to the Balkans. Over the course of the last year or so, I've been fortunate enough to be able to discover some absolute gems in this arguably lesser known region of Europe. As well as a short trip earlier in the year to Sarajevo in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Look at it, this is ultimate wow. I've spent the majority of my time in Belgrade, Serbia, a city I quite simply fell in love with. Holy crap, Budek is the best. We also visited Niš, Serbia's third largest city, probably one of my favorite destinations of 2020. Oh. We then arrived in Skopje, North Macedonia, We've marveled at the somewhat controversial statues in the capital, climbed a mountain and sampled some of the local cuisine. But now it's time to blow your mind. Today, we're in Orid, a popular tourist spot which seems to be growing in popularity. Is this my kind of place? Let's find out. Good morning, everyone. It's Sunday, it's 8 a.m. And despite having a bottle of wine all to myself last night, I've managed to wake up at this time. And you know what? It's incredibly worth it because the views at this time of the morning in Orid are spectacular. The lighting is just amazing. Look at the lake. You've got this smooth and serene feel. The word I would use would be silky. It looks like silk, if you know what I mean, on, on the water. It's amazing. And, um, you know, the view here, you've got these hills in the distance to the left. You've got Albania over there. and on the right you've got like the old town area and the fortress up the top and you've got churches there were once 365 churches in Orid we're going to be exploring some of that today I've got my little ginger friend here by the way hello <laughs> yeah so let's um take a look at this lake um some of the shots I am showing you are actually from yesterday so you'll see Orid at different times of the day. They were at about four o'clock, five o'clock, I think, so the sun was going down. Um, and see what I mean about that silky, rippling effect? It's beautiful. We're gonna go out on a boat ride later, by the way. Let's get walking, because we need to get up there before the boat ride. Say goodbye to Ginge. Bye, hon. Oh. If I'm absolutely honest, Orid is quite touristy, you would expect that. It's a lake in the south of North, Ma North Macedonia. Locals will come here. And if I'm absolutely honest, it's not really my kind of place. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Just my personal taste, I prefer big cities and hustle and bustle and graffiti and, you know, places like Belgrade, you know. But saying that, I am here for a bit of a weekend away to relax, you know. And this place, Orid, is perfect for that. We're heading a bit closer to the old town area now. You've got the big North Macedonia flag up there. One of the most beautiful flags in the whole of Europe, if not the world. As I said, 365 churches in Orid, or at least there used to be one for every day of the year. There's some of them here, Church of Saints Clement and someone else that I can't pronounce, uh, Church of Saint Sophia, and also an ancient theater or an amphitheater. This old town area is very quaint. I quite like it. And we've got another cat. <laughs> You've got these cobblestone, like narrow passageways and like you've got a wooden building up there. Okay, interesting. Um, and as you can see, there are many restaurants all over the place. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, she doesn't like me. Um, yeah, some of them very modern looking. Yeah, it reminds me very much of places I've been in Italy. So like maybe Sorrento, places like that. There is definitely a bit of a Mediterranean Italian vibe here which I really like because I really love my time in Italy. Yeah, this is what I mean about that Italian feel. You've got old Citroen 2CVs, there's Vespers, uh, you know, balconies with flowers on and um, these amazing views. Um, and on our way to the amphitheater, here is one of the churches, Church of Saint Sophia. And I understand it's a very important church in Orid and also in North Macedonia because it holds many artifacts or artwork or something from the Middle Ages, I'm not sure. Very impressive, lovely, and obviously Orthodox Christianity, we are, we are in the Balkans, and there is only one Catholic church in Ored, as far as I'm aware, that's what I've been told, and bizarrely, it's the next building to where I'm staying. <laughs> as well as tourism in Ored, obviously, jewellery is another key 
aspect to um, the economy. So you do find a lot of silver shops, um, silver jewellery I mean, and pearls. Look at all those pearls. It's like something out of um, Dynasty from the 80s. So I'm at the ancient theatre in Orid. Let's take a look around. So, an ancient theatre or amphitheatre. And I realised yesterday I've been pronouncing it as amphitheatre my entire life. Brilliant. And as an English teacher, I'm fascinated by word etymology, the origin of words. And amphi means from both sides in Greek, apparently. Obviously, if there's, a, some, if there's some sort of performance or gladiator contest, which there were, people watch it from both sides. There's even a place up there, a restaurant called Gladiator. And as you can see, there are there is a uh, stage there now, so performances and things still happen nowadays. But during the Roman Empire, the Romans killed a lot of Christians and the locals buried this amphitheatre after the fall of the Roman Empire. It was only rediscovered again in the 80s through excavation. So as a result, there are now outdoor performances here quite regularly. And of course, these amphitheatres are widespread across what was the former Roman Empire. And I've been to one in Sicily. I went to um, Teatro Greco, I think it was called. Greek theatre, I guess. Um, but when I was there, it was about 10 years ago, there was some uh, maintenance work being done or something. So I couldn't actually kind of access it. I could just see it from above. Um, but this one, as I fall down the stairs, you can get all the way down to where, you know, gladiator matches. Is it a match or a contest? I don't know. Um, used to take place and get an amazing view. Look at that. Just looking for an ATM so I can get some money for the um, boat ride. Um, meanwhile, I thought I'd show you a bit of the uh, like shopping area. And um, yeah, there's lots of um, typical like touristy restaurants down here, pizzas, Italian places, you name it. Um, some great uh, like gelato ice cream. Um, obviously, it's early Sunday morning, so it's not operating yet. When I was in Belgrade, um, gyros were my absolute guilty pleasure. So good, but also so fattening. So we won't be doing that today. It will add 300 Macedonian dinar. Would you like to continue? No. Right, bingo. We've got some money and it didn't charge any extra that one. I had to walk a little bit further. That's a classic example of why I have a Revolut card also because I don't get UK bank charges on my Revolut. You occasionally get the ones if you use ATMs like the other one I use. But yeah, there's a link in the description by the way if you want to get Revolut cards, see? Shameless plug. <laughs> So it's boat time. As you can see, there's a submarine thing there. All these other boats, they generally go at like 10 or 11 in the morning until about half past four or five o'clock. This is the one I'm doing. It's um, promotion, 400 dinar, which is about, oh, let me think. It's about six, seven pounds in British pounds. Um, yeah, you go to the Bay of Bones for about half an hour, I think. And then the woman told me you go to St. Juan Monastery for four hours. I don't know what I'm gonna do there for four hours. We will see. So basically I just got the ticket off the woman and she told me I need to pay on the boat. 400, oh, I said that already. Right, let's go. Right, I found the boat. Tarred. Okay. Lovely. Strava. Someone can see this the boat will go shank. Okay. Great, thank you. Okay, great. Now that I'm looking back, I can see all the signs I tried to fill in the cracks that were spread in my mind. But I was all out of hope, lost in an endless maze. The emptiness had afforded just like a void. But you broke the coldness somehow and lit up a flame. So, right, our first stop, we're off the boat. I'm at the Bay of Bones, there's my ticket. It's um, 100 dinar, 
very affordable. And um, I think you will agree with me, that boat trip so far is probably one of the most spectacular boat trips I've ever been on. It's bloody amazing. And despite my hangover and general exhaustion and grumpiness, <laughs> that is now resolved. Brilliant. And this Bay of Bones, it's actually a reconstruction. It's a prehistoric settlement dating back to the 12th century BC. So a long time ago, obviously, you know, that many years ago, it's not gonna be how it was, but um, let's have a look. Yes, yeah, so obviously this is a mock-up, historical mock-up of what it potentially used to look like. We've got like these huts with skulls hanging from them of various animals. And um, this very much reminds me of somewhere I went in Bolivia about 12 years ago. So there are so many things in Ored that kind of remind me of places. That was in um, Lake Titicaca. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. There was like a similar sort of dwelling on the lake where people lived on like these huge lily pads and also that was um, recreated as well. There's like hay over the doors. And you only get half an hour here, by the way, before you have to get back on the boat. Yeah, so I assume people lived in very simple huts. I guess that's where they sleep with animal skin to keep them warm. Straw roofs, all made out of wood and some kind of I don't know what that is, some kind of plaster or, I don't know, obviously it's recreation, so I don't know. Look at that. It's funny how easily a life can be torn apart. Why couldn't I simply see that I was sick at heart and I am in deep debt. The climb we did was unreal, you made me so speechless. I just can't believe it. Okay. Okay, we're off the boat, and it's time to check out the monastery of St. Naum. Not Nuam, as I said earlier. I think I might have still been drunk then. Then we're gonna have some food, hopefully. So it's an Eastern Orthodox church. Looks very similar in design to the Church of Sophia earlier. Look at these views. And you might be able to see in the bottom left, there's a peacock. Our peacock friend has come out from under the shade now. Beautiful. Oh, hello, hello. Good timing, peacock. Look at the green on the back and the blue and the colors. Oh, it's just beautiful. Hang on, let me move the camera. What a fascinating animal, love it. I've only ever seen a peacock in a zoo before. Hang on, are the, are the feathers opening? Wowzers. There we go, it's enough peacock for one day. I can't even. I think that's a phrase that young people say. But look at this, there's the boats down there. Look at the mountains in the distance. That is absolutely spectacular. Ah, just look at it. And I keep banging on about places that I've been before in this video. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it has been four years, right? But I'm getting feelings of British Columbia, Alberta in Canada and Lake Issachar down there in um, Kyrgyzstan. But obviously this is North Macedonia. This is Orid. This is right up there now with all those places that You've probably heard of. I certainly hadn't heard of Orid until a few months ago. So um, yeah, Orid so far, totally beautiful. And my mask broke by the way, but I tied it back together. How's that for ingenuity? <laughs> this is 2020, right? And we're gonna have some food now. Um, I was gonna have it when I got back to Orid itself at a restaurant called Hotel Tino that my Airbnb host recommended. She's from Orid, so take her word for it. Um, but I think we're gonna have some food here because there are a few, a few restaurants and I'm starving, so let's eat. Oh, it's very bright. This is a restaurant Ostrovo. That's a bit like my surname, um, Ostrovsky. Um, but it seems like it's mainly a fish restaurant. I don't really feel like fish. I know we're by the sea, but not the sea, the lake, but still let's see what else we can find. So this is the other restaurant here, Cuba Libre. Um, they do, you know, fish, 
which is quite expensive actually. It's like 2,600 for trout. Um, I will put down below how much that is because my brain isn't working right now. And um, yeah, I was going to have a burger. Uh, where is it? Shaska burger for 240. But it's very busy, as you can probably imagine. Um, it's very touristy, things like that. There's a very long wait for tables. So um, what should I do? I might have an ice cream instead. Yep, the waiters are turning people away because it's so busy. But you know, that's to be expected. And you're probably going to say in the comments, why don't you just wait around? You know, you're in a tourist place. That's what it's going to be like. You're right, I could, but I have no, no patience. I have impatience, that's what I was about to say. Um, and also, I need to get the boat back in not very long, so um, don't panic, we can go to that place I was talking about earlier. This place is down in the car park, but it's closed, but I'm showing you it in case it's open when you come here. Um, you've got Macedonia burger, nice, goulash, sama, mixed grill, tavchi, gravchi, misaka, some other things, and palachinke. Okay, I've made an executive decision. Despite having a return ticket on the boat, I'm actually going to get the bus back. It's 150 dinar, which I think is pretty good, actually. This is over. Yeah. Okay, this video has truly jumped the shark. Um, the bus I was thinking I was going to get turned out to be that car with the driver and two random women that I don't know. We've now stopped off in a caravan park with drunken men singing for no apparent reason. This is turning into one of those old style classic videos which is quite fitting given that this is the last one that's actually while I'm traveling. Check out the last video if you um, want to know what I'm talking about. Yeah, we've um, had buses that turned out to be taxis, we've had boats and now we're on a caravan park. Oh, look at that towel. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. We're back in Orid, the lighting's awful, um, via a caravan park and a car that had crashed into a tree. Um, but that's good because it's quarter to five. I was just looking for a watch, I don't have a watch. Um, the boat hasn't even left yet, so I'm back already. Get changed, food, fortress. Okay, I'm at Hotel Tino, and you know what? I'm going to treat myself tonight. You might be thinking I should have some Balkan food, but we've had enough in other videos. I just want to have something else something like pasta or ooh, cold meats beautiful there's risotto salads what else have we got and when we are oh, some Macedonian specialities a bit like tavci gravce with bacon we had tavci gravce in the last video so there's nothing like a massive plate of meat after not eating for 24 hours, apart from Haribo cola bottles, yeah, absolutely stunning. Mm. There's also um, garlic butter that came with a basket of rolls. So great so far. So I'm really going off on one today. I'm having um, delicatessen hors d'oeuvres, which is basically a selection of meat. So you've got um, proscutia, I can never say that, <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, and other various meats. Um, can I eat all this? Of course I can. Um, if you don't know me already, I am a major carnivore. Of course I've got olives. Lovely. So I've done quite well so far with my meat platter. Emphasis on the word so far. I will be continuing. But I've got my second dish now, which is salmon taglatelli. And it's very nicely presented. Look, you've got the um, herbs around the outside and the lemon there. And I'm glad that there's not a lot of it because I am actually quite stuffed at the moment. <laughs> it's difficult to do pasta, tagliatelle with one hand. Okay, oh, there's salmon, lovely. Tagliatelle. Let's just do the best we can. Mmm. Oh, lemon. Yeah, it's really good. The um, salmon is very strong. I really like strong salmon. Sometimes I find it can be a bit weak. Oh, there was a bit of light in there, good lighting. But yeah, but this is really good. Beautiful. I'm really glad my Airbnb host recommended this place because it is stunning. Just look at that sunset. We're heading up to the fortress now. That is stunning, right? Don't you just love sunset lighting? And look at this. Really in. Oh, so this is where the lighting goes terrible, by the way. But anyway, before we leave the Balkans, we've got one last Astava and one last Yugo. 
can hear one of the mosques in the background. And the fortress is through those trees. This doesn't surprise me at all, if you've seen my recent videos, the Balkans during Corona. Um, yeah, it's closed, even though Google Maps said it's open 24 hours, but what can you do? Um, I was half expecting this, but you know what? It's not so bad, we have amazing views over there. Apologies for the terrible picture quality. I film on a phone, not on a camera. You may not have known that, but anyway, look at that view. It's, um, again, I'm gonna compare, sorry, Acapulco, Copacabana, Rio de Janeiro. <laughs> <laughs> but no, this is Orid, as I said earlier. Look at that. Right, hello everyone. It's now about six days later. That's right. And I'm no longer in North Macedonia. And firstly, I want to apologise. This video is a bit long, but I wanted it to be a bit of a feature length one, considering that this is my last video in the Balkans for this year. However, I will be back next year. Mark my words, Serbia, Macedonia, Croatia, Bosnia. All of you, hopefully. And the thing I wanted to say about Orid, at the beginning of this video, I kind of said that Orid wasn't really for me, but you know what I was doing? I was generalizing. As I've done throughout this video, I was comparing it with other places, but we shouldn't do that. We should go to places and make our own mind up. So you know what? I was wrong because Orid is one of the most spectacular places I've ever been. I'll leave it at that. And um, yeah, over the last week, I've been in London for four days and there will be a blog post about my experience there with Corona. Um, you'll find the link to that down in the description once it's all done, which means I'm now in my final destination. Can you guess where I am?